I've got some great stories about some of the work that women are doing at the moment and, um, and that I've been fortunate enough to be involved with. Um, so I'll just whisk you through this and if you want to know anything more about it, we can talk at the, over the coffee break. Um, next slide, please. Oh, I have to do it, okay. All right, I heard people saying next slide and struggling, so. Oh, that was not a struggle at all. Um, I was delighted that three of our speakers mentioned the advanced trial. I think Sharon mentioned it, Lynn mentioned it, and Judy just mentioned it. Um, and, and the sort of data we're able to generate if we actually do have sufficient proportions of women in trials. And um, both Anton and I were actually involved in that trial. And one of the things that was really great about it was that there was a tremendous involvement of the community, not just women, but um, both men and women were involved in the design of the trial. There was a lot of different consultations. As you all know, South Africa has a very robust civil society, an extremely um, vocal and active organization called the Treatment Action Campaign. So the, it, it would be unusual to actually set up a study like that without involving the community. And um, the, the particular benefit, two different benefits of that involvement with research was first of all, when recruitment was going slowly, we um, had TAC kind of helping with recruitment so women and men um, would kind of go and help to encourage people to go into the trial. Obviously, we weren't coercive, but it was nice to have people who could actually explain about it. But very importantly, and I think that this has happened with a lot of trials that are conducted with women recently, when we had um, this, the, the signal with dolotegravir and neural tube defects um, in advance, we actually had to reconsent the women and talk to them about this extra risk that they may be taking. And so obviously having women both participating in the, in the trial and part of the community advisory board was massively kind of helpful. And um, these are a few photographs um, the, the community advisory board are with their research nurse. This is actually not from advance. This is from um, a group in Kailitra. And um, the other group are the Kenyan cab. Um, as you know, in originally, community advisory boards were mainly set up by trials or by pharmaceutical companies. And this happened both in the US and, and in Europe. We actually set up our own community advisory boards and started inviting both industry and researchers to come and talk to us on our own territory. And this has been very much reproduced across Africa, um, mainly through the work of a group called AfriCab, which is a pan-African um, community advisory board. But we've got many local advisory boards and a lot of the work actually because of the the, the WHO guidelines and the high profile of dolotegravir over the past year or couple of years has been involved with some of the work around um, neural tube defects and that risk because as I'm sure all of you know now we what we were expecting was that people would be very cautious about it, but actually, if you, if you talk to women, it was, the result was completely the opposite. People were very demanding. Oh, and here we are. And um, here's another role of women in research, actually discussing the results. Um, we've got two pictures of the same activist. I just wanted to kind of give a shout to Jackie Wambi, who's, um, was invited by IAS to talk about um, some of the issues that I've just described with the neural tube defect risk 
And um, she's also on television in the, the that television -y picture. I, was, I, I don't always know my left and right, so that one. And, um, and here are various women involved on panels, talking about results, talking about results on the television, and, uh, and also often being authors on the paper to announce the results. Um, here we go again. And then very, very importantly, beyond the scientific community, actually sharing results within um, their own communities. And uh, this is where I've done a lot of work with groups, particularly in South Africa. Um, and it's now got a, a sort of fancy name, um, like so many things which are just sort of common sense, sort of dressed up as a science. Um, <laughs> this is called human-centered design, which basically means rather than telling people um, <laughs> in a way that you think that they should learn something, you actually involve them. <laughs> and, uh, and we get people to be involved with, in this case, their own materials to talk about guidelines, to talk about results. And uh, so by doing that, people actually have words in the booklets that they understand rather than ones that we think they're going to understand. So, um, like most decent activists, I didn't go to medical school at all. I went, I learned to design textiles, so I um, have... <laughs> no, but after 20 years, it's fun to go back and, and work with designers and, um, work and do this sort of work rather than just talking about p-values all the time. Um, because I'm one of those sort of geeky girls that doesn't like to just admire men talking about p-values. And the other thing that I think is really important is it's actually demand creation. So once you've been involved in the research, you understand the results, you've communicated them to your communities, what if those results aren't being immediately realized? And um, so basically, we go out on the streets, and that includes women. And um, since it's now, I'm now five minutes late because of the, the run-on, I'm going to consider that to be the end of my talk. But if there's anybody that wants to come and rant about women's role in research for hours over coffee with me, I'd be delighted. And I, I didn't have a thank you slide, but there, there's just many, many, many women that I've had the privilege to work with, and also many, many, many women and men, researchers who've invited us to the table to join in. So um, thank you very much. And I think tea, coffee, yeah. whichever you prefer. <laughs> Thanks.